but the but humans have become a blight upon the planet. And you know, you can't suck oxygen from pavement. And as we deforce uh, the ecosystem and we lose soil, we lose biodiversity, and we lose the very fabric that gives us life. We're currently evolutionary successes, but maybe not for very long. Because the rule of nature is when an organism exceeds the carrying capacity of its ecosystem, then that, that ecosystem uh, revolts against that organism as a disease, creating other diseases that will knock down the population. We're facing that right now. Water now is more expensive than gasoline. I mean, this is ridiculous. Water comes out of the sky, you know, and fuel comes in. We have to pump it out of the ground. And when water becomes more expensive than fuel, then I think this is a telltale sign that uh, we are losing uh, some of the essential ingredients that, uh, that give us life. And so I really see this as a, as a warning uh, coming out of the fabric of nature that we have to wake up and respond as quickly as possi uh, possible uh, to saving biodiversity. We are evolutionary successes today. We should rejoice, but maybe for not for very long. And uh, we are now uh, borrowed uh, ecologically from the carbon bank uh, far more uh, than that which we have reinvested. And, uh, and in simple economics, uh, we're becoming ecologically bankrupt. We'll be a casualty of that economic and ecological collapse. We've been very adaptive up, up to now, but I think uh, our problems now exceed our cognitive ability to be able to adapt in a way that we can repair the ecosystem sufficiently to guarantee our own survival. As humans create devastation, the very species that will awake humans to the devastation that they're creating and the harm they're doing on the environment are the species which contain psilocybin and that open up the awareness of what you're doing. The downstream effects of our activities today is unraveling the very fabric of nature. And it's the very fabric that's given us life. But this just shows that as the ecosystem uh, is destroyed and CO2 levels go up, you know, we're at 385 parts per million of CO2. Just 20 years ago, we're at 365. When we hit around 1,200 uh, asthmatic uh, people, we're going to have a hard time breathing. You know, their immune system is going to be in impaired. They're going to become more diseased. More diseased individuals, they become a source for pandemics. More, more viruses then will spread. More people will be sick. The health system will be overloaded. Ecosystems will continue to decline. And resources will be, uh, will be even more and more stressed. As we go to 2,000 parts per million to 5,000 parts per million, massive extinction of large mammals. We hit 10,000 parts per million, virtually all animals uh, larger than a, uh, than a mouse are, are, are gonna die off. And you know, that is a trend that we're going toward. As the equilibrium shifts so rapidly, humans are not gonna be able to adapt. Is there carbon negative uh, technology that you know about or ways to kind of... The mycelium sequesters carbon dioxide in by building up the soil. So it's counterintuitive because people think, oh, mycelium releases carbon dioxide, that's bad. Not true. About 50% of the carbon dioxide, uh, that, or of the carbon that's being entrained within the ecosystem is sequestered into the soil. So the soil becomes a carbon bank. Soil is created by fungi. The thicker the soil, the more carbon dioxide that is sequestered. The loss of soil today is causing a tremendous impairment of the food chains, uh, poverty, uh, disease, uh, you know, uh, and increasingly restricted resources. And as we lose the soil, we lose the carrying capacity of moisture within the ecosystem. So we, you know, we have increased uh, arid zones. And as that result, then you're gonna have wars between yeah. cultures that have water, cultures that don't, cultures that have food, cultures that don't, cultures that have fuel supplies, cultures that don't. And so it's gonna fracture and create antipathy between the haves and the have-nots. And we may think that we're godlike creatures on this planet that control the environment. <laughs> I assure you that is not the case. We may be able to temporarily wreak devastation on the ecosystem, but the ecosystem holds the cards. And at the end of the day, the ecosystem is gonna determine whether we survive or not. You know, And unless we get very, very smart and, and react globally uh, uh, in, you know, on an individual basis, where in every school system, every community, individuals are incentivized for their green works, for reinvesting in nature, unless we honor them in the same way that the stock market has honored you know, uh, short traders. Unless we, we shift that entire economic model, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're on the threshold of, of perishing. What do you think of one of our you know, uh, 
memes that we're using in this film, this 2012, which I wrote about in my work and so on. Uh, I mean, do you find it interesting that this transition period corresponds to, you know, maybe what these indigenous the traditional cultures had to say about, about the future from their perspective? Well, you have to wonder. Um, boy, they're right on schedule, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I never subscribed to 2012, ever, you know, uh, until this past year. As you've written about, 2012 may be just resetting. You know, it's like, uh, you know, hard crashing a computer and you go to reset. So that may indeed what, what is happening. Uh, the failure of our economic system, I think, uh, speaks to some underlying misrepresentations and bad assumptions. Obviously, um, capitalism is not sustainable when you have these uh, so many derivatives that are, exceed the wealth of the world, and yet they have made bets on derivatives upon derivatives upon derivatives. You know, it's no longer anchored in reality. It's, it's all so divorced from what is real. I'll never be an apologist for my use of psilocybin mushrooms. Uh, they've been extremely important to, to my life um, and have been central to my spiritual belief system. What few people really understand who are outside of the, the psychedelic uh, uh, experience is that it is really true that our brains filter out so much stimuli and from an evolutionary point of view that may have been essential because our, we'd have too much information coming in so we had to par it down to that information that is absolutely essential. But psilocybin uh, mimics, uh, it, it is very close to serotonin. It, it becomes a temporary, uh, it becomes a temporary, uh, a temporary neurotransmitter. And in doing so, the floodgates to the senses are open. So you get a lot more information, a lot more stimuli. And I think it's also the transition of the awakening of a child to become an adult. This is a search for the meaning of life. What's death all about? What's in the afterlife? Um, and so I think this is a common practice uh, in theme throughout all cultures. As young men and young women become adults, they seek meaning in their life. And so when I uh, partook of the psilocybin mushrooms for the first times, and then subsequently, I got this very common theme that I never received in any of my other experiences in life. And the common theme that I heard and I experienced was the following. The earth is in trouble. Don't you see? Aren't you aware? I felt the fabric of nature calling out to me with all these voices saying, wake up, do what you can. You are the leading organism on this planet and you have a responsibility and a destiny. And will you fulfill that destiny in a positive fashion or will you be part of, the, uh, of nature's destruction? Mycelium is a foundation of the food web. Uh, fungi came to land about 1.3 billion years ago and plants followed several hundred million years later. So by joining with fungi, we set the environmental stage for subsequent generations. And this is what uh, scientists now are quickly tuning into is that you can steer the course of habitat evolution uh, by empowering the fungal networks that give derivative benefits to the other members of the ecological community that you want to enhance. So these are absolutely essential to, to the food web and they're the construct of life on this planet. And so the organization of mycelium, of the computer internet, uh, of neurons, and as I state, you know, looking at the, the, the organization of even dark matter, they all conform to, this, to the same archetype that, that, is, that is governed by string theory. And so I believe that this is not accidental. The invention of the computer internet is an inevitable consequence of a previously proven evolutionary successful model. The mycelium has developed it, our brains have also developed it, and that our invention of the computer internet is an inevitable consequence of us repeating a previously successful paradigm. And so we've been able to do that over time.